And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Draw not nigh either. Put off thy shoes from off thy feet. For the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. Amen. Uh, this morning, we want to consider Moses' rod, the shepherd's rod. And uh, basically, uh, as we go through the scriptures, we'll find that the rod that he was carrying, even though it was a shepherd's rod, you know, can also symbolize the word of God in our lives and how we handle it. Amen. And so that is, uh, that is the goal, because we need to be able to handle the Word of God appropriately uh, in this life as Christians. No, that is the tool that God has given to us. In Exodus chapter 3, you see the story unfolding how God appeared to Moses and told him that he was so much you know, concern about the suffering of his people in Egypt, in captivity. They had been there for over 400 years. And he said the time had come that he should bring them out of that place. And so he was going to use Moses to accomplish that assignment. But the way that God did it first with Moses is that he caught his attention as we saw in that brief, verse 4, it says that, And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, what did he see? He saw the burning bush. The bush was burning, but it was not being consumed. And it was a very interesting sight that fire should be burning, but the bushes are not consumed. So that attracted Moses to the side. And, and so, so when, when he, he did, did that, that, God called out to him, Moses, Moses, Moses and, and he said, here am I. I, I want, want to submit to us this morning that there, there is a way that God, God reaches out to each and every one of us every day. But, but the problem is whether we are responding to his promptings. You know, because uh, a lot of us tend to be so consumed with life and all that is going on that we forget that there is a God who actually cares about us and wants to do something with us and for us and through us. And so, the Bible says that when Moses saw the sight and was attracted, that is when God began to speak to him. It is very important that the Bible that you read, that you have in your hand, you regard it as something very valuable. That is how you begin to attract God's attention in your life. If you want God to do something for you, you need to be taking interest in the word of God seriously. That is what will attract God to you. Amen. Because the Bible says, draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. And so that is when God when he, when he saw, saw Moses' attention, attention he called, called out to him, Moses, Moses. Moses. Here yeah, it is very personal. You, you begin to realize that as you, you take interest in the word of God, you begin to develop a relationship with him that is very personal and individual. It is not based on what somebody has said, but it is based on a very personal encounter that you are having with him on a daily basis. Amen. And the Bible says in verse 5, Moses drew, uh, was trying to draw near to uh, the site, uh, the, 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 the burning bush, and when he heard the voice of the Lord. But God 
Yes, yes. You, know, you know, they said, said you know, of course. You can't, you can't just, just approach me anyhow. Take, take off the sandals of their feet. This, this is very important. important. What, what it implies is that if, if you want to serve God, God, if you want to take his word and handle the word of God, God you, you have, have to know that the word of God is holy. It, it is pure. It, it is God's, God's word. And it, it cannot be handled anyhow. There, there is a way in which we have to handle the word of God. The Bible, the Bible says, says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And, and so, so when, when you begin, begin to apply that understanding to the Bible, then you are actually being given the access to stand on that holy ground in the presence of God. Hallelujah. It says, put off thy shoes from off thy feet. We know, we know that, that sandals gives us comfort. And uh, it gives us the firm, uh, how do you call it, grip on the ground so that we don't get um, maybe pricked by things, stones or stones or whatever on the ground. But take it off. In other words, the things that you are standing on to protect you and to defend yourself with your own wisdom, put them aside. And, and begin, begin to now consider this holy God. God. There, there is something about him. him. He's a mystery. Amen. Amen. Verse, Verse 6 says that moreover he said, I am the God of thy father. The, the God of Abraham. The God, God of Isaac. And the God of Jacob. So the question now is, who is your God? What, what kind of God are you serving? You know, are you serving the God of the nations? Or are you serving the God of heaven and earth, the one who created the universe? And do you regard the Bible as this authoritative word that has control over your life? So God was reminding or educating Moses to understand something here. That you are dealing with a history. There have been people before you. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And I know that the word about the history of Abraham had been discussed and talked about among the people of Israel. So when God was talking to him about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, I believe that he understood it. And so it is very essential that we understand that we are dealing with a God who has dealt with other people in the past and is willing to take us through the process of life in order to be successful. Amen. Exodus chapter 4, verse 1 to 4, please. And Moses answered and said, But behold, they will not believe me, nor hearken unto my voice. For they will say, The Lord has not appeared unto me. You know, so let's pause in verse 1. So uh, if you read the chapter of chapter 3 of Exodus, uh, God was preparing the mind and uh, giving the commission to Moses to undertake this assignment. And uh, after God has spoken, we come to chapter 4 and uh, Moses answered the Lord. They say, you know what? What are you asking me to do when I go? Nobody's going to believe me. Nobody is going to say that, you know, God, God truly spoke, spoke to me. And, and I, I guess, guess that this, this is where, where a lot of us we end, end, even though we are in the body of Christ, we have accepted Jesus as our Savior. It is like that is all. We don't, don't try to press on to know God at a deeper, deeper level. Moses was having some self-doubt. Remember, there was a man, the Bible calls him Nicodemus in the book of John, chapter 3. The Bible, Bible says that, that he was a, a Pharisee, you know, he was a Jew, and uh, he came to um, see Jesus secretly by night. And uh, he was asking Jesus a question, you know, because there was something strange about Jesus, that he was doing so many marvelous things that, 
it, it caught his attention, so he wanted to explore, find out exactly how and the secret of his success. So he asked, you know, Jesus, that I, you know, I, I know that nobody can do these things except God is with him. And, and so, so Jesus, Jesus responded to Nicodemus and said that, you know, this, this is about the kingdom. kingdom. It says, except a man, man is born, born again, he, he cannot enter the kingdom, kingdom of God. God. Hallelujah. The, the question, question that I want to ask this morning, how did you become born again? If, if you, you say you are born again, again what was your experience? experience? Were, Were you convinced, convinced that truly God, God you know, you know spoke, spoke to you and you came to a point where you were convicted about your lifestyle and you were ready to abandon it you were sorry about it and you came into this new space where god has created for you and you said oh god i'm sorry i want you to save me because i cannot do it without you from today onwards for the rest of my life i am going to save you i'm going to love you i'm going to think about you i'm going to Look, look into, into the, the word of God, God and seek your, your face. face. I mean, have you, have have you, ex, you know, examined yourself to, to see if truly you are fulfilling that, that obligation and commitment that you made when, when you became born again? Moses was, was having some doubt. And, and maybe you are at the point where you are having some doubt. Whether, doubt. whether truly, truly, truly the word of God is something that you need to give attention to. The, the Lord, Lord has, has not appeared unto me. That is what he's saying the people will say about him. How about you? Has the Lord appeared to you? Is your new birth truly, truly an experience that you are confident about? Let's move on. And the Lord said unto him, verse 2, What is that in thy hand? And then he said, A rod. And, and he, he said, cast, cast it on the ground. ground. And, and he cast, cast it on the ground, ground and it became a serpent or snake. And and Moses fled from before it. And the Lord said unto Moses, put forth thy hand and take it by the tail. And, and he put forth his hand and caught it. And it became a rod in his hand. Hallelujah. Now, now when we read the scriptures, we, we come to find out that the rod symbolizes the word of God. Now, now Moses was a shepherd. He yeah, had his rod, a staff in his hand. And this is what he used to you know, manipulate and control and manage the sheep in the field, in the desert. But now, God was trying to let him understand that the assignment that he was about to give him, he was also giving him the provision, the resources to be able to deal with it. Hallelujah. And, and so he asked Moses, what are you holding in your hand? Moses, I'm having a rod. He says, yes, yes, put it on the ground. He did. And, and immediately it became a serpent, a snake. This, this is an indication that the, the word of God that we have is a mystery. Hallelujah. You, you may think it is some ordinary staff, ordinary book, but, but it is not ordinary. It, it is supernatural. Because, because we are dealing, dealing with an invincible God, God and, and this is the provision that he has made for us. That, that we should have and carry the word of God, not, not only in our hands, but also in our heart. And, and be able to speak it with our lips. Hallelujah. That, that is how we have to treat the word of God. First of all, we receive it in our heart and believe it. And let it settle there. And then our mind you know, you know, begin, begin to agree with the word of God. God. And, and then, then our mouth will speak the word of God. God. That, that is how we, we begin to, you know, handle the affairs of this life. Now, now when, when he put the serpent on the ground, uh, the snake, uh, when well, he put the staff on the ground and uh, it became a serpent, the, the instruction that God gave him to, to pick it up was, was really serious. serious. That, that he should pick it by the tail. tail. Hallelujah. And, and we, we know that snakes are very agile. agile. You know, you know they, they, they can really coil very fast. Snap and, you know. And so, the, the best, best way, way to catch a snake is to, is to, get, to get the head, the neck area. Hallelujah. And so, 
when, when he stretched his hand to touch the tail of the snake, the Bible says it became a rod instantly. Once again, God is demonstrating to Moses that what I am giving you is supernatural. Hallelujah. And, and that if you handle it appropriately, you'll be able to accomplish the task that I am giving to you. Praise the Lord. And, and so, so the, the word, word of God, God must become, become something to, to us. You know, you know that, that is why when, when you read, read the Psalms, David talks a lot, so much about the word of God, especially in Psalm 119. It says, I desire God's word more than anything. And because of that, I become wiser than even those who are older than me. When you read Psalm 16, and, and Psalm 19, I think, you know, uh, he, he says, says that the word of God is more precious than gold. And that, and that he desires it even more than fine gold. gold. And he says, in the keeping of it, there is great reward. Hallelujah. But, but I wonder how many of us truly have given that value to the word of God. For us to desire it and, and to seek it and to read it and to know it. If, if we don't do that. We, we are, are doing, doing ourselves harm. Hallelujah. Remember the story of Jonah. Jonah was all called by God to go and uh, do a certain assignment. And he ran away from the assignment. And uh, we all know the story. Somehow a storm arose which God orchestrated. And he was about to die. But, but God, God saved him. And uh, he, he made, made a statement when you read Job chapter 2. Uh, not, not Job, sorry. It's Jonah. Chapter, chapter 2. And uh, he, he says, says that those who observe lying vanities, they forsake their own mercy. mercy. In, In other words, the, the provision that God has given for us to, to use if, if you, you deny it, it you, you are forsaking or denying you yourself the mercy of God. Hallelujah. Now, now when you read that story, you understand that, that statement very well. Because God's word can never fail. Anybody who handles it appropriately will always be blessed. Amen. Exodus chapter 17. I want to read verse 1 to 7 very quickly. It says, and all the congregation of the children of Israel journeyed from the wilderness of sin after their journeys according to the commandment of the Lord. And they pitched in Rephidim, and there was no water for the people to drink. Wherefore the people did chide with Moses and said, Give us water that we may drink. And Moses said unto them, Why do you chide with me? Why do you argue with me? Wherefore do ye tempt the Lord? Verse 3. The people tested there for water. And the people murmured against Moses and said, Wherefore is this that thou hast brought us up out of Egypt? To kill us and our children and our cattle with thirst? And Moses cried unto the Lord, saying, What shall I do unto these people? They be almost ready to stone me. And then the Lord said unto Moses, Go on before the people, and take with thee of the elders of Israel, and thy rod, wherewith thou smotest the river. He's talking about when they crossed the Red Sea, he used that rod uh, to accomplish that miraculous parting of the Red Sea. He says, Take that rod with you. Take it in your hand and go. Behold, I will stand before thee there upon the rock in Horeb. And thou shalt smite the rock, and there shall come out water out of it, that the people may drink. And Moses did so in the sun. And he called the name of the place Massa and Meribah because of the chiding of the children of Israel. And because they tempted the Lord, saying, is the Lord among us or not? Amen. So this is a very beautiful story to illustrate how the rod 
keeps coming up in the story of the Israelites. And God was insisting, and Moses constantly was using the rod in every situation. So they had been rescued first from Egypt, because he started using the rod before uh, Pharaoh, remember? There were so many miracles that was done with the rod. Then they came into the wilderness, crossing the Red Sea, they used the rod. And as they kept going on the journey, which we can exemplify as the journey of our lives on earth, it came to a point where there was no water. Life was tough. They were in the wilderness. Things were very harsh. And then it seems all of a sudden they forgot everything and began to argue with Moses. And they began to doubt and to express Setting thoughts that, that was really rude against God. And God, God instructed Moses to, to take the road and, and go to a certain location and strike the rock. And when the water came out, praise the Lord. You know, I don't know how many years you have been a believer. I don't know how many years since you became born again. But, but as, as life, life will have it, there, there is nobody on this earth who, who from the day that he is born to the day that he is died, that he never encounters any challenges. We, we all encounter challenges from time to time. Even those who are in the richest families, they may have the millions and the billions of dollars. But life has a way of testing us from time to time. And, and the only solution that we have is the word of God. God. Hallelujah. And, and so, so our successes, successes does not guarantee that, that everything, everything is going to be smooth for you in this world. We, we might have all the money, we might have all the houses, we might have all the clothing we want, we might have all the kind of friends we have. But, but the, the reality is that Bible says, Bible says we are not fighting against flesh and blood in this world. world. There, there are, are evil forces that are constantly hostile to us. And they are seeking ways to damage your life, to destroy you. And the, and the only, only way, way you can prosecute, prosecute these challenges is, is to apply the word of God under those, those circumstances. circumstances. Hallelujah. These, these people were so frustrated that they forgot about all that God had done for them. them. And then they began to complain and to argue and to express unbelief. It was, it was a very bad moment. And once, once again, the rod of God brought the answers they need. They needed at that time. So, so this is to show us that God's word will always give you the answer if you go to it. Hallelujah. It will bring you out of the situations that you find very hopeless and helpless. God will always bring us out. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1 to 11. It says, Moreover, brethren, I will not that you should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. And, and we were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. They did all eat the same spiritual meat. Okay, remember um, the food that God gave them, the quail that was falling from the sky. The Bible is calling it spiritual meat. And the word of God that we have today is spiritual meat for us. Verse 4. And, and they, they did all drink, drink the same spiritual drink for the, for the drunk of that spiritual rock that, that followed them. them. And, and that rock was Christ. But, but with many of them, God, God was not pleased. For, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now, now these things were our, our examples. So the intent, we should, we should not lust after evil things. things as they also lusted. Neither be ye idolaters, as, they were, as were some of them, as it is written. The people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication, as some of them committed, and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Neither let us tempt Christ, as some of them also tempted him, and were destroyed of serpents. Neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured, and were destroyed with the destroyer. 
Now, Now all, all these things, things happen to them for examples, and, and they are written for our admonition, upon whom the ends of the world are come. Amen. Amen. Very simple summary of this is just to let you know that God is the judge. He is the one who judges the nations, and he is the one who judges the people. He is the one who judges your life. You, you may think, think that, that you have the freedom that you need and you can do and live any how you like. And you, you might get away with a lot of things now. But, but there is one judge. His name is Jehovah. Hallelujah. And, and we, we have, have to give heed to his word. The Bible is saying here that we, we must learn from the example that, that has happened in history prior to our time. We, we should learn from them. That, that these whole Israelites, Israelites they, they were all baptized under Moses. In, in other words, we've, we've all come, come to Christ. Christ. We, we say we are born, born again. We are Christians. But, but there, there is the likelihood that, that if you don't apply the teachings and the principles of God's word, you are, you are going to drift from that family of God. God. And, and very likely, you might not make it to heaven. And, and so, so it is very important that we don't, we don't take our salvation, salvation for granted. As, As we see here, it says the people just were just eating and drinking, and drinking dancing, dancing, fornication, fornication adultery, adultery, wickedness. wickedness. They, they just, just, they just live their, their own life anyhow without, without going to that, that road, which, which is Jesus Christ. Christ. So, so we, we must be very careful how we relate with our God. God. Bible, Bible says it's a consuming, consuming fire. fire. Amen. Amen. There, there are three things that I have down here how we can handle the word of God, which is, you know, uh, God, the rod of Moses, which, is symbol, which symbolizes the word of God. Number one, you must practice proclaiming or preaching the word of God. To proclaim is the same thing as to preach. In other words, you must, you know, speak it with confidence and boldness and you do that in prayer first of first and foremost and you also express that in your conversations when you communicate with people the word of god must always be on your lips you know for people to be able to tell that you are a different person you know for instance if you go into the community, the marketplace right now, you begin to transact business with somebody. And maybe they are treating you in a very unrespectful way. How are you going to respond? How are you going to communicate your body language, your speech? If Christ is formed in you, your choice of words will be different. But if Christ is not formed in you, you begin to behave like anyone else in the world, cursing, shouting, and sometimes, sometimes people, people go to the extreme, extreme beyond, beyond fighting to even kill. You know, you know so, so you, you must know how to handle God's word. word. Psalm 33 verse 6 says, By, by the word of God, God were the, the heavens made, and, and all the host of them by, by the breath of his mouth. mouth. Amen. Amen. The, the word of God, God was created. Uh, the, the world in which we see was created by what? The word of God. Everything, Everything that we see was created by even the seat on which you are sitting right now. What, what is holding it together is not just the nails and the screws. You know, in your natural eyes, that, that is what you are seeing. But in, in reality, the, the word that brought, brought all these things into existence was invincible. Hallelujah. But I would say the word of the Lord is what created the heavens and the earth. And all of the host of them, everything that is in by the breath of his mouth. You know, I look up the word breath is called ruach in the Hebrew, which is R-U-A-C-H. You know, it is the same thing also means spirit. And so when God spoke, that, that was his spirit also being released to accomplish his purposes. And when, and when you translate that into us, God made us in his image and his likeness. When, when God created man in the beginning, he says he was just clay. He just formed out from the ground. And man was just lifeless. 
underground. There was, there was nothing, nothing that, that was making him move until God breathed into him. Into, into that, that clay. And when he breathed into that clay, then, then he would go up, you know, you know became, became activated, activated. And he was able to understand, understand his environment and, and began to speak. speak. Hallelujah. And, and so, breath here means that, that when, when he spoke with, with his mouth, mouth there was also the power of the spirit that was behind it. Hallelujah. And, and so, so when, when you handle the word of God, first from, from your heart, and you speak it with your mouth, you know, then, then God will come because he sees that you have believed in your heart. Then God will make sure that what has come out of your mouth, which is his word, will fulfill the purpose for which it has been released. Hallelujah. You understand me? By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. I pray that you will get to understand this. And so, um, when, when you read, read the Bible, Bible and you see, see that, that God is speaking to you through the, through the word, you know, you know speak it back to God. Let, let it become your portion. Let it become, own it in your heart. And when, when you speak it, it begins to impact your life and influence the circumstances that we all face from time to time. So, so number one, proclaim or preach the word of God. Number two, give thyself holy. Unto, unto the word. Some, Some people, people don't give themselves wholly. In other words, completely. You know, you, you cannot serve God haphazardly. You know, it, it has to be truthful. You know, when, when we, we come into the love well, so called, you know, people talk about love so much. If somebody says that I love you, you want to believe that what the person is saying is true, that he loves you with all his heart or her heart and there's, there's nobody, nobody else beside, beside you and, and so if you see the person uh says i who says, says that he loves you and, and is talking to another woman guess what you become, become very jealous, jealous. hallelujah and that's, that's why there's always conflict, conflict. The, the same thing applies to god bible, bible says god, god is a jealous god, god. And, and so when, when you don't give god's word attention Anytime you are giving God's word attention, it's like you are falling in love with him. But if you ignore God's word and you don't take interest in it, that means that you are you know, prostituting with other things of life. Things that are not really necessary that can give you eternal life. It makes God very jealous. Hallelujah. And you grieve the heart of God. And so if you want to serve God, serve God wholly. Give him all your heart. Do it. With, with complete joy, joy and gladness. gladness. This, this is, is what God, God is looking for. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 15. This is, is meditate upon, upon these things. Give, give thyself wholly unto them, that, that thy profiting may appear to all. In, In other, other words, the way, way you only profit from God's word is when you give yourself wholly, not, not when you do it haphazardly. Don't, don't serve God, God half and half. half. Remember, Jesus, Jesus said you cannot serve God and mammon. You cannot, you cannot serve, serve two masters. masters. Whoever you serve is the one who rules you. If, if you serve money, money will control you. If you serve women, women will control you. If you serve men, men will control you. If you serve, you, you know, your, your power or your, your authority or some, some position, position the, the position will control you. So, so God is, is looking to be the Lord of your life. Are you willing, willing to give him that space? space? You know, you know, when God, God created, created us, he did not create us to be robots. That, that is why he gave us the ability, ability to choose. He told Adam and Eve, there is this, this beautiful garden. garden. There's, There's everything that you need. This, this is a tree of life. Always feel free, free to take, take from it. it. But, but the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, I'm telling you, that the day that you take a, the fruit, fruit from, from that tree, tree you will die. die. Hallelujah. And, and when, when it happened, that, that they were deceived and, and they took a bite of that fruit. Did they, they die? Well, well it, it looks like they were still alive because God was talking to them. them. Hallelujah. It, it appeared. But, but that death, death is not something that is instant physically, but, but it, it is spiritual first. And the, the ultimate is that you are, are going to die and leave this body. body. And, and beyond, beyond that, 
you've, you've spent, spent time in eternal, eternal hell. So, so death, death is a process which we have, have to be very careful and understand. There are people who are sitting here today or anywhere in the churches around the world who claim to be Christians but they are dead spiritually. And, and so, so you have to examine yourself. Give thyself wholly unto the word, word of God so, so that thy profiting, profiting may appear to all. Amen. That, that is what God, God is looking for. for. Number three, exercise praise and thanksgiving always. It is very important. The reason why we exercise praise and thanksgiving is because God is sovereign and he alone can handle every situation and solve our problems. And so when we understand that, we, we thank, thank him. This is, this is the expression of faith. You know, you, know, you haven't, haven't seen it yet, but you are thanking, thanking him before you see it. You are thanking, thanking him before you see the result. You are not waiting to say, okay, if I have a car, then I can thank God. God. If, if, I I have, have, if, if I have, if I get a house, then I can begin to thank God. If I can get a woman to marry or a man to call money, whatever it is, we are putting other things before God. No. We, we have, have to begin, begin to thank him because he is able to make all grace abound and make the provisions for our lives. Hallelujah. And, and so, so Psalm 67 verse 4 to 7 says, Oh, let the nations be glad and sing for joy. Can you testify in your own heart that you are glad, that you are a happy person in Christ? Is your, your, your Christianity, are you happy with your life? You know, it says, says let the nations be glad and sing for joy. When, when, you, are, when you are glad in God, when, when you are happy and, and you come, come to church, church and, and then they begin to sing praises of the God. God. Nobody, 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 nobody will come and be telling you, trying, trying to, you know, shake you up. Go down. Down. No, you, no, you, you find you feel so free because, because there is joy in you. Joy, Joy is like a river. river. Hallelujah. You, you can't, can't contain it. You, you can't, can't hold it down. It, it has to be expressed. So, so all let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For thou shalt judge the people righteously. God is the judge. That's what I was saying earlier on. He's the judge. He will judge righteously. God always judges. But he's always fair. And so if you are living a certain life which is crooked, don't, Don't expect, expect that, that just because God is merciful, he's going to... No, 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 no. no. You, you will be punished. Hallelujah. Because, because God, God is righteous and God is holy. So, so we should not take him for granted. Him. Amen. Amen. He, he always judges, judges righteously. If, if somebody is oppressing your life, if, if there are agents of the enemy trying to destroy you, and you, you are, are living a righteous life, and, and you are seeking the face of God, and you are crying out to him, that God, I have more help by you. And I'm, I'm looking, looking at God. God. Who, Who is a righteous judge who will come to your help? Hallelujah. And, and he will govern the nations upon the earth. Hallelujah. Verse, Verse 5 says, says that, let, let the people praise thee. That, that is, is just a command. command. It's a command. Do it. It, it is, is very, very important because, because when, when you praise God, God, God does not praise himself. himself. He, he waits, waits on us for us to praise him. That's why when we read the book of Revelation, we are told that the angels, 24-7, they constantly are bowing. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, so let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. Verse 6. Then, then, after you praise God, then something will happen. It says the earth will begin to yield her increase. Hallelujah. God has made provisions for us. But, but you'll you be amazed, amazed how life sometimes plays out. That, that a person, person can, can work hard and maybe have a million dollars and, and all of a sudden loses all that money. money. How is, is that possible? possible? But, but we, we see it happen all the time. time. And, and we, we can, can go into different sectors of life. life. You, you can, can be moving, moving about and, and looking, looking healthy. healthy. All of a sudden, you are struck with, with this very serious disease, which, which is, is about to take you down. down. And, and you are wondering what can happen to you. You, you become, become so terrified. terrified. You, you can, can die, die anytime. But, but when, when we, we begin, begin to praise the Lord, when, when we begin to live according to the word of God, God it, it says that God will begin to make 
provision for us. He says that your life will begin to yield an increase. Hallelujah. An increase in health, increase in strength, increase in the protection and the mercy of God. Hallelujah. Even our God shall bless us. Hallelujah. If that is your goal, if, if you, you want, want God, God to bless, bless your life, life then seek, seek his faith diligently. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The, the word diligent means that you are constantly you know, pursuing. You are, you are not, not you are you are relentless. You, you never, never give up. up. You, you are always making the effort to seek the face of God, to understand him. Remember Jesus said, seek ye first the, the kingdom, kingdom of God and his righteousness. And, and all other things shall be added unto you. Before, Before he said that, he had spoken, spoken about all the lilies of the field, the, 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 the birds, birds of the air, etc., etc. He says that all these things that, that people want in this, this world, world, you know, your, your father knows that, that you have need of them before, before you even ask. ask. But, but the most, most important thing is that you must seek the kingdom, kingdom of God first. I pray, I pray that you, you will have some assessment of your life and, and begin to make certain changes. To, to accommodate, accommodate more, more, give him more space and time, and time so that you, you begin to handle his word with, with power and grace. grace. Amen. Father, the creator of heaven and earth, we come before you today in awe of your majesty, grace and unfolding love. We thank you for the peace that surpasses all understanding. You, Lord, Lord our God, God, you are our refuge, refuge and strength in every present help in trouble. And, and for, for the Holy Spirit who guides us and comforts us, we thank you for the gift of faith, for the privilege of prayer. Lord, may, may your blessings be upon us. us. May, may your face shine upon us and be gracious unto us. We, we call on you to lift up your countenance upon us and grant us your peace. We will walk in the ways of the Most High, knowing we are deeply loved and called. Let the light of God shine in our darkness. Let us be empowered by the Most High God to live in the life of love, peace, and justice. May we go forth in the Lord's presence and may we live our lives in the testimony of the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. May the Heavenly Father be our protector. May the Lord shield us from the snares of the enemies and keep us from all harm. May the angels of the Lord encamp around us to deliver us in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us share the grace. Let the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall surround us all the time of our lives. And may we dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. We shall live and not die, but declare the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Amen. And God bless you all.